Hi, Rupert. I'm Dean, still. Um, the discussion this morning about happiness as awareness of being or awareness of awareness um, having no relationship to the, the objects or the contents of awareness. The last year and a half that I've been writing a book and um, I, several times I said to my wife, I'm so much happier when I'm working. You know, that feeling of being in the saddle and having all my cylinders clicking and just, you know, being in the flow of the thing and, and you know, all my, pow my best powers and best skills fully engaged. Um, the, it's, and, and actually when you came in last night and you s mentioned that you're so happy to be doing this again in person, and I suspect it's a, a similar experience that you're describing. So I guess the question is, um, are we using the wrong word? Is there a different no. word for that? Or what is the relationship of that happiness to that happiness? It, you're not using the wrong word when you say to your wife, I'm so happy when I'm, when I'm working. It's just a... Um, it's a shorthand. What, what, what you really, what you're really saying to your wife is, when I'm working, I'm writing. In your case, the tendency of my mind to escape the now into the past and the future is curtailed, because I'm so interested in what I'm writing about. All of my attention is gathered in my current experience. So there is absolutely no resistance in me. And because there is no resistance in me, my innate happiness shines at that moment. So that's what you're really trying to say to your wife. The shorthand way of saying it is, I'm so happy when I'm writing. It's fine to say that, as long as you, you understand it's not, the ha it's not the writing that makes you happy. It is the writing that gathers your attention into the now. It brings to an end the activity of seeking and resisting. Resisting takes you into the past. Seeking takes you into the future. It is the writing that, that, that pauses the normal activity of seeking and resisting. And as a result of that, your innate happiness shines. And then we wrongly attribute the happiness to the, act, to the, the action of writing. But it, it, it's fine particularly, you know, with you and your wife who understand these things. It's fine. It would be tedious to have to explain that to your wife. I uh, <laughs> don't think she'd appreciate it. So you just say, I'm, I'm so happy when I'm, when I'm writing. Yeah, you know, I come in and say, I'm so happy to, to see you all. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really think that you have caused my happiness, but in that moment there is nowhere else in the universe that I would rather be than here. Everything is just gathered here. I don't want to be anywhere else. The time and the pa time, uh, uh, past and the future don't exist for me in that moment. This is where I, I want to be. And because of that, there's no seeking, there's no resistance. My innate happiness shines. The happiness that is the nature of being simply shines. It was always there in the background, but it is obscured by the activity of seeking and resisting that takes us into the past and the future. Maybe then the, the deeper question that that suggests is, is, is there in a sense uh, something, if, if, if we could set things up so that we can always teach or we can always write or we can always do whatever it is that gathers our attention to that thing, in a, would that be, uh, would that be inimical to, to the path of awakening in well, that you, it, it makes it too, yes, too it, easy? We, it, we, we have to have a chance to be not doing those things and realize that, wait, and where, where did my happiness go? Yes, because in that case you would be relying on the external object, the activity in your case, to gather your attention. No, it, 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 the intention should come from you. In, in other words, make the, don't rely on the person, the object or the activity to gather your attention. 
Uh, that, 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 that's called addiction. Uh, why, why do you think people are addicted to, to um, substances and activities? It's because a particular substance, the, the, you take that first drink, and at that moment, the drink is, it, it's, or the first cigarette, the first puff on your cigarette, the time ceases to exist for you. You're, 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 exp you're gathered into the moment. The past and the future disappear for you because you're, the, the, the drink, the cigarette, whatever it is, brings you to the now. And briefly you taste your true nature of peace. You wrongly attribute it to the, to, to the, the drink or the cigarette. And then when the effect wears off, the, the habit of seeking and resisting returns. And you remember, ah, last time I had a cigarette, it, I, was, I was at peace. So you go for the cigarette again. You're relying on the object. That's how addiction develops. You're relying on the object to, to reclaim your attention from time and bring it into the now. No, so, so here we, we, we understand the mechanism and we make the intention to face our current experience without resistance. We don't wait for experience to dictate to us, to, 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 to come back from our happiness-seeking adventure in time into the, into the now. We make that our intention. We make it our intention to say yes to whatever experience we are facing, to face every experience as if we had chosen it. We don't rely on experience to do that for us. And I don't mean to imply by this, Dean, that, that you, you wouldn't still have a preference for, for writing over, over gardening. Or, or, that's, but you don't write in order to become happy. There is this sense of fulfillment in you, and you, you write in order to express that, and as I know you do, to bring your understanding to bear on film and literature. And, 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 and then, of course, you, you cannot help that when you are doing that, you're totally um, in the flow. It's what a sports person feels when they're in the zone, that there is no, there is no Seeking and resisting, the separate self doesn't rise up in you to say, I don't want what is present, I want what is next present. So at that moment, you're completely one with the universe. In fact, you're not one with the universe because you haven't separated yourself out from the universe as a separate entity in the first place. There is just the impersonal action of the universe flowing through you. And it's intoxicating. We love it. Yep. We love it. Why? Because it's the absence of separation. What we really love is our own being. It's we... we it, it's, it's, the, it's the dissolution of the felt sense of separation. That's the experience that, that every sports person is, is aiming for. They don't really want to win the game. They think they do, but that's not what they want. What they really want is to taste the nature of their being. They want to, they want to be... They want, they want to come back from their happiness-seeking adventure in, in time and to be one with the moment, to, to, to just be one with the impersonal functioning of the universe without any sense of separation, rising up and separating ourselves out from the totality. That, that's, the, that's, the, that's the experience everybody, everybody seeks. <laughs> 